Most people in America have seen a sousaphone before, even if they didn't know it by that name. This enormous horn shows up often in large numbers in high school and college marching bands each fall during the football season. For example, here are more than 20 in the Penn State Blue Band in 2019 when my son was a member. But that's about where the familiarity ends. Very few people today know that the sousaphone originally had a bell that pointed straight up, or that it was created not for marching, but for use in a concert band, or that it was named after a bandmaster who would quickly become the most popular entertainer of the day, John Philip Sousa. But what almost no one knew for the better part of a century was that the very first sousaphone was built by J.W. Pepper of Philadelphia in 1895. You see, since around 1921, the C.G. Kahn Company has proudly claimed to have created the original sousaphone, and for good reason. Their new horn was announced to the world in the January 22, 1898 edition of the Music Trade Review, as if such an instrument had never been seen before. The notice was simply titled, The Sousaphone, and it said, In honor of John Philip Sousa, the great bandmaster, C.G. Kahn has made a new circular double B-flat bass, which he has entitled the sousaphone. However, 24 years later, tucked away in the August 30th, 1922 edition of the Christian Science Monitor, there is an article in which Sousa himself recounted this. He said, The sousaphone received its name through a suggestion made by me to J.W. Pepper the instrument manufacturer of Philadelphia fully 30-odd years ago. At that time, the United States Marine Band of Washington, D.C., of which I was conductor, used a double B-flat bass tuba of circular form known as a helicon. It was all right enough for street parade work, but its tone was apt to shoot ahead too prominently and explosively to suit me for concert performances, and so... I spoke to Mr. Pepper relative to constructing a bass instrument in which the bell would turn upwards and be adjustable for concert purposes. He built one and, grateful to me for the suggestion, called it a sousaphone. It was immediately taken up by other instrument makers and is today manufactured in its greatest degree of perfection by the C.G. Kahn Company of Elkhart, Indiana. Okay, so here we learn a number of things. First of all, that Sousa himself came up with the idea for the horn. And that this was while he was still leading the Marine Band, which was 1892, his last year with that unit. And that it was built by Pepper, not Kahn, although Sousa came to prefer Kahn sousaphones. And that it was created for concert purposes, not marching. And that Mr. Pepper honored Sousa by calling it a sousaphone. It took Pepper a few years to produce the horn, but by late 1895, he was ready to introduce it to the world. And by January 1st, 1896, if not earlier, it was indeed played by Herman Conrad and used daily in Sousa's Peerless Concert Band. This great ensemble spent the first three months of 1896 giving concerts from coast to coast. And in the middle of that tour, one newspaper, while commenting on the concert, took notice of the strange modified helicon, writing that a player of a double B-flat helicon trooper who was six feet five inches tall and who was then not as large as his instrument was one of the features of the final part that attracted attention. He was a former member of Gilmore's band and his instrument was one made for him from a model furnished by Mr. Sousa himself. It is known to the profession now as a sousaphone. At one point in that cross-country tour while in Salt Lake City, someone took a photograph of the band in concert in which the faint image of Pepper's sousaphone can be seen just above the head of the first chair clarinetist. Curiously, however, following that tour, there seemed to be no more photographs of or reports about the historic horn. Pepper's sousaphone just quietly disappears, while less than two years later, Kahn's first sousaphone appears in Sousa's band. Sousa used Kahn sousaphones in his band exclusively from 1898 until he passed away in 1932, featuring one in his bass section from 1898 to 1915, and then two from 1915 to 1921, and then all sousaphones in the section from that point on, sometimes as many as six. 
Now, the story of how the original J.W. Pepper sousaphone resurfaced in recent years is almost too good to be true. On a quiet Sunday afternoon in the spring of 1973, John Bailey, who at that time was a 24-year-old tuba player and recent graduate of Westchester State College, he joined his mother and sister for an outing to Renninger's Flea Market in Adamstown, Pennsylvania. John had moved back home to Wernersville near Reading, where he began teaching and occasionally subbing with the Ringgold Band, which, yes, is the band that holds the distinction of being the very last one that Sousa conducted before he died. John wasn't looking to buy anything that day, but he noticed a vintage three-valve rain catcher sousaphone, heavily tarnished and covered with dust, hanging upside down from the rafters by a single loop of binder twine. And when he was told that it would cost only 50 bucks, he raced home to get the money. His plan was to get it into playable shape and have an interesting horn for use in parades. In cleaning up the sousaphone, John discovered that it was unfinished, that is, just raw brass, He also found that the front of the bell featured some beautiful and highly significant engravings. At the top, barely visible, is a portrait of Sousa wearing the uniform that was first used in 1894, and so the horn could not have been created before that year. Below that is a twirling ribbon that contains separately the words Sousa and Phone, the name that Pepper chose for this special instrument. And next are the words Highest Medal and Diploma, Chicago 1893, referring to an award that was won at the World's Columbian Exposition that year. This has led many to conclude that the horn was built in that year, but we just ruled that out. Plus, many pepper instruments made later than the sousaphone boast of this award on their bells, and that's all that's going on here, just a little boasting of recent accolades. And finally, it says, Premier J.W. Pepper Maker, Philadelphia and Chicago, and then gives the serial number 8800, which is also found on the second valve casing, which supports what we already know, that the instrument was built in 1895. For almost 20 years, John Bailey kept that historic horn in storage, collecting dust once again. Along the way, he received confirmation from experts that he had something special, but he never got around to having it restored and displayed. But then, in August of 1991, John gladly sold the horn back to its maker, the J.W. Pepper Company, represented at that time by George Class, who proceeded to have it restored, including adding a lacquer finish. So, finally, after 96 years, the first sousaphone was ready to go public again. As far as we can tell, Pepper never made another horn like this one. It truly is a -a one-of-a-kind treasure. In fact, it wasn't until late 1905, a decade later, that Pepper finally tried his hand at selling sousaphones. But at that point, he chose to import rather than build a very different double B-flat sousaphone, along with something never before seen in America, which was an E-flat sousaphone. But even by that time, the popular view of sousaphone history had few people remembering that J.W. Pepper had anything to do with the new instrument. In promoting his imported sousaphones in 1905, he urges his readers to, quote, remember that we are the sole originators of this style of basses, and all others are imitations of these magnificent, large proportioned monsters. And so there is simply no doubt about it. This historic horn, with a bore of 0.730 inches, a bell diameter of 24 inches, a height of 4 feet 5 inches, and a weight of 24.9 pounds, is the original sousaphone, and it was created by J.W. Pepper in 1895. 